My mom purchased her bakery 10 years ago. When she first started out, she was coming home at midnight and going back to work at 3 a.m. I remember just wanting to help her, and she said, I'm absolutely happy with where I am. I'm accomplishing something that only this country would have been able to give me. And 10 years later, she's got an incredible bakery. She employs Americans at her business. When Ola was five, her family immigrated from Albania, seeking political asylum. She gave up everything just so that me and my sister could get an education. Throughout my childhood, I would dress up as a doctor and tell my teacher, I want to be a surgeon. There's a bargain you make with your family and your teachers, and you believe it. Work hard, do everything right, and it will pay off. But they each hit the same wall. Without citizenship or a social security number, they were stuck in limbo. Ever since I was little, people were always talking about the University of Michigan. And if you worked really hard and you went to U of M, you could really be a doctor. Ola has dreams of going to medical school to be a surgical oncologist. I want to start my own organization that works with women who have cancer but don't have the means to get top-notch doctors. She and her family were living in the U.S. legally, but due to a clerical error, they lost their status. While their case was being appealed, they had to check in with immigration every six months. You would come in, your officer would look over your paperwork, and you were good until the next one. Ola and her mother went to a routine meeting at immigration headquarters. It was a hot, big, crowded room. Dead silent. A supervisor led Ola into a separate interrogation room. You're going to be deported. It's going to be soon. I was taken to the basement, handcuffed to a chair in the hallway. Six hours. I believed in this idea that if I had worked hard enough, I would earn my place here. Ola was released after 10 hours in the detention center. Her attorney said there was a possibility she could stay in the country, but her mother would have to leave. No, there's no way we're doing that. She decided to go public with her story. It's not about you anymore. You're doing them an injustice if you keep quiet about it. Ola created a petition asking for a temporary stay and went looking for signatures. There's really nothing to lose at this point. Within hours, 18,000 people had signed her petition and thousands called immigration headquarters demanding her mother's release. Ola collected over 15,000 signatures. So I had to make more copies. It took off like wildfire. They organized a series of rallies. My friends made banners, posters, t-shirts. One week before her high school graduation, Ola was granted a temporary stay. I have a chance to graduate, a chance to be a doctor. There is no better feeling than that. Theirs is a story without an ending. And there are millions of others who are waiting. Join us. Let's write their ending together.